to the, the country has to face. How does that affect the, the cost of capital for KCB? So, so today we're in a very good positioning. And I agree, I'm one person to agree with our challenges on the major projects. But but majority of those projects are at their end phase, the last phase. Talk about the railway, the ports, the roads, most of them are. And the big one were the ports and the airports. No, the, 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 the ports and the railway, those are the big projects. So what we saw then was an increase in the risk profile of our country, an increase in the, in the, in the amount of money we could borrow and the price of credit. So the euro bond set up a higher price. I think the pricing we used to borrow ourselves, uh, you know, let me say at LIBO today plus 400 basis points. But the euro bond is at the LIBO plus 6,700. So we saw an uptick of our cost of funding from our global market. So, so, but what we, so there's a stability since then from 2014. So that doesn't change dramatically actually. Mm-hmm. So what I would say for us is that there are two challenges. One is to increase the revenue profile. Mm-hmm. So as we build more as banks credit to SMEs and micro enterprises and integrate them in the value chain, we have more revenue. Mm-hmm. We have more taxes. Right? This is one issue. You also must increase the revenue profile by seeing how to collect more revenue from the digital channels, especially for mobile lending, mobile payments and transactions. But that is where the future of taxes is going to go for developing markets. It's, it's no longer be an individual coming up and saying, this is my income and declaring it every year. It is that when I do a transaction today, instantaneously, with a lower fee, I can collect my revenue. So that's one issue Kenya must be able to address. And although we are still, our revenue connection to GDP is still the highest in the region. Mm. Yeah. I mean, average, digit, the uh, region, so I think today we are almost shy of 20%. Right. Correct. Mm-hmm. And you may say it's low. But in Africa, we don't even average 15%, 13%. Outside South Africa, and if you remove the countries in the north. So I would say this is the second point, increasing the revenue aspect. Yeah. The third, and perhaps more important, is that we need to monetize the value of those investments in the railways and the ports. So if you move 2 3 million tons of cargo through the port, so, so there's a lot of negative aspects in the railways. What I would say is that we haven't, there are gaps that need to be resolved. It's a fantastic investment. There's no doubt it's much faster today as higher capacity. But the endpoints, so at the port of Mombasa and the delivery unit in the center in Nairobi, so there is some, uh, uh, what I would call as uh, bottlenecks. So if we can unbottleneck those, how do you move materials from the ship into the railway? And how do you deliver them to near where the market is? If those two issues are addressed... Why were they not part of the original project? Well, I, I, I obviously it wasn't your responsibility. Well, uh, well I, I wouldn't have an answer, but I believe that uh, it will be addressed. So the railway itself has been seen as a bad project, but initially, from I mean, some data that allows me today, even as a passenger, I can be in Mombasa in five hours, non-stop. It saves me time, it saves me money. It's cheaper before. Even on a first-class ticket, it's much cheaper than taking an overnight bus. The same thing like cargo. So we need to remove, and it's easier in any kind of big investment to deal with the bottlenecks. And if those are addressed, then you can reduce your costs. So you can be more competitive, actually, as an economy. And as you become more competitive, you increase your revenues for the economy. So it's, I, I would say that it's, it's, um, it's a moving target. It's a continuum. I don't think that the, the debt level today is a ceiling. As you build more revenue, you have a chance to increase your ability. And as long as those projects are generating back to the economy, you're in a very good shape as an economy. So you're, you're not in the uh, David and D camp of, you know, white elephants, you know, creating a debt hangover for Kenya just at the moment when, you know, the demographic wave, the need to find jobs and climate starts to, to really create problems. The next I mean, I, I would say that they are un- totally unrelated, totally. The demographic challenge. Yeah, of course. Yeah, well, all, all, all yeah, but, and I don't think that there is a, there is a, um, this, what can I put it? Let me say that I would not say from my point of view that there's a perfect moment for us to dissect the crisis the continent is facing in terms of job creation. And whether you do the railway or not, it doesn't mean that you will address the unemployment issue for the nations. Many nations have no big projects, correct? Nigeria. 
You can look at uh, Ethiopia. You can look at other countries, but they have unable. Mm. So, so, them, so, so in a way, I wouldn't. I, I believe that there is value for integrating markets. No doubt about it. Yeah. I mean, and one of the economies I'm very proud about that is Ethiopia. Mm-hmm. Look, they've done a much bigger railway network than ourselves. Yeah. Look at China. There are very few places you cannot go in China today without a railway. They're running out of places to put high speed exactly, tracks to. Yeah. That's exactly the point. So it's important for us. So the issue is to find how to deal with our gaps. Yeah. yeah. Because as a business, as a banker, I see the opportunities. Now, we also need to deal with the issues of the youth and employment because the railway doesn't deal with that. Correct? A port doesn't deal with that. You need skills, you need technical skills, you need kids to get out of universities to go into technical schools. Build and then give them this. So even if you're building a project, can we enforce Africans' biggest gap, Nicola, is the thirty percent local content. How much of those railways have been built by local enterprises? Mm. What part? Who is maintaining it? Who is managing it? I mean, that's where the jobs will come from. If you go in and do a business and build a new hotel, like this convention center, who are the workers? Who are the suppliers? Give one part of that to the local entrepreneur. That's how you build business in the market and build their capacity. But if, you're, if all those jobs are being exported out, you don't have unemployment. And that's the biggest con- challenge that Africa definitely faces today. So the skill-based, the technical capability, we don't have technical skills. Look at the technical schools in the continent. Kenya is betting a lot of, I mean, like the Kenya is investing a lot in the technical schools mm-hmm. this year. But how many of our countries? We see that in France, we in Germany, in Switzerland, and other countries in China. We see that in Africa, every child wants to go to university. Not every job in our economy will be blue collar. Yeah, our jobs will be technical jobs. Yeah, the and the plumber, the, yes, two million population is thirty or forty. Yeah, and the greatest failure for us or challenge for us is that we have not invested much on the science, yeah. on your engineering, and your technology. We have it. So the, the, the focus on STEM as a way of get, because you want to create solutions for problems, yeah. yeah, and it's very well known how those solutions are created. That has been our biggest, and, and many times, one thing I don't agree. We all say that Kenya or Africa countries like Kenya, we say we were same as Singapore. It's not true, or we same as South Korea. It's not true, correct? Because the the path of change was different. They invested in engineering. They invested in design. They invested in science. They invested yeah. in mathematics. Correct? Today, we didn't. We didn't. So we may, we may be, we would have been the same as particular year, but the trajectory of transformation of these nations, and Africa must learn. So if you look at Hong Kong, if you look at the whole China, South Korea, Israel, look at, forget about the Central Europe and North America. Those countries have built themselves by focusing on engineering. Mm. The constitution of engineers per thousand is much higher in those countries than us. Yeah. If you look at the level of rankings, that's where we are as a nation. And, and my view is that Africa must retract its steps, correct? And try and profile and build. And not engineering of the 60s, engineering of the new millennium. Mm. Yeah. So we are going to drive less cars. We don't even know how to train somebody. Correct? The cars we have today are very digitized, they're very automatic, so they're not carburetor engines anymore. How are you driving them? So those are the issues I would say. So I am I am I don't see anything wrong around making investments. Yeah. I, you know, I got a chance to come back out of Shanghai and I look at the high speed train. Many years people will say it's an impossible job. And in the words of Nelson Mandela, it looks impossible until you get started. Mm-hmm. Today, thousands of passengers thousands, literally, flock the railway station in Beijing to Shanghai. Mm. That's what we need to do. Can I, from Kigali, can I go to Mombasa in a day, in 12 hours? That's what you need. Mm. Yeah. And obviously, there, there are many challenges raised, but I wouldn't, whether it's pipelines, railways, and ports, you know, I mean, those are issues that people raise, but I think they are necessary ingredients for accelerating transformations through connectivity. And because remember what I said earlier, we are very fast. Average cities in the continent, one city farthest is 4,000 kilometers. Mm. Average connection hours, 15 hours. Mm. It's important to look at those issues not to make a mistake, like Europe. Europe is much closer. Mm. 
it takes less time. So I'm, I'm not even sure there's a lot of things we're going to learn from that the European Union. No, it's uh, we have everything very, is unique. We're very different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. correct. It's trying to get a parallel parallel between night and day. You can spend a millennia, mm. yeah? and they're as different as they come. So that's my view about how we see the change in our market. And I am very excited. I mean, an enthusiastic person. Yeah. If, if you're enthusiastic and excited about the future, Correct. and if you are coming to the end of your time at KCB, Correct. then you will have thought about what comes next. Correct. <laughs> yeah, so I've been thinking a little bit much more about policy. So these conversations we're talking about integrations, you know, partnerships, regional development, mm. changing and addressing the greatest pain points for our economies, mm. which is unemployment. The youth bulge today that we have, we see it as a youth dividend. And if what we're going to have in the continent is an angle people without an income, without a job, with energy, that is not progress. And we can never be known as a continent because we can give birth. That's not, that's not, that's, that's what, that's what those economies are made of. Economies will be made of because we can create jobs, we can use the talent, we can innovate and create solutions for problems. That's what builds economies. Mm. That's why Europe is very strong. That's why Singapore's more economy is strong. So, 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 so that is where I think my profile in terms of enabling as a catalyst to champion transformation for Africa lead organizations. Would you go into, um, so like a, a regional organization African okay. development okay. works in by so, so, so most likely, that's what I see myself in terms of the role I play at an African level, right? Even at, even at, but it starts with the policy level within our own institutions, within our own country. So I'm very much profiled on working with small enterprises, working with our youth in our foundation today to create jobs so that they can go into creating crafts, creating businesses, going into, I'm very interested in fintechs myself. So even in terms of putting investments in those young startups that create the algorithms, that create the scores, that provide medical solutions to the mobile apps, enhance changes in insurance, because that's an area that we understand very well. Penetration is less than 3%. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of exam. I'm actually looking forward, personally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In addition, in the remaining time, is to build a radically different digital bank within KCB. We target that 40% of our income will come from the digital channels. Today is around about 20%. So we're doubling in the next three years. And that will put us in the same space as the disruptive fintechs, which are not regulated, which have got no conditions. But they're looking, it's almost like they're an Uber waiting to happen for the financial sector. Right. Yeah. Or they are Airbnb. And that's what we're going to be able to defend our businesses. Otherwise, we'll find that our business will back in the way we knew it in another five years, in this decade. So you want to future-proof KCB with a... And we want to... That's why we set up our digital lab, correct? Which crowdsources innovation from different kind of techies and engineers and whatever it is. Have you purchased... Sorry. We already have that. We already set it up. So what we are now doing is to bring on board uh, engineers, developers, scientists, and come in and co-create innovations around the financial sector, banking, insurance, investment, wealth management. And, and I'm a big believer in collaborations. Mm. So Bob Colimo is one of the people that I, I value very much. He's, he's one of the mentors I look up to very much in terms of building, co-creating solutions. So actually working to our best advantages. Mm. Right? So rather than fighting every day to say, how can we come together to create value for our customer and share in the revenue? So if there's one thing we can learn in the continent, it doesn't happen all the time, is we should share in a lower revenue of a bigger pie. Yes. Right? So I'm all right to be a 5% owner in a billion dollar revenue than to be a 100% owner in a 10,000. That's what we do. So many times the national champions fight for a smaller pie and there goes lost opportunities for the continent. So that is my take. That's, that's very interesting. I, I think people don't see the, uh, the value that is created when you're not just fighting with your, you've both got your talent, you've both got your areas of expertise. Correct. Uh, because telcos and, and banks normally, normally, you know, they don't get on. We are in a very space. unique situation. We said they ate our cake, right? They yeah. took our cake. Yeah. That's what we tell Safaricom. But let me give you some data that is very valuable. And you spoke to Safaricom about that, I'm sure, or even asked them. If you think about the banking sector, the greatest beneficiary of the transformation of mobile 
or the creation of M-Pesa advice. 